Luminous Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Grace and peace to you all from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I have spoken about two things you need to know. I will speak about the third one now. The two things I have spoken about, know your Savior. One, two, know your identity, who you are. Uh, this time I'll talk about know your purpose for life, your mission. Know your mission. Let us pray, Lord God Almighty, the knowledge that saves comes from you. What you want us to know that saves comes from you. Think through our minds this time and they make us focus on what really matters in knowledge as we consider the issue of knowing your mission. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Know your mission. Uh, Peter has declared in the text I, had, I read for knowing your identity. In verse 9, after he says those wonderful qualifications of the people of God, chosen people, royal priesthood, holy nation, people belong to God. He explains in one line why they should be something very important, why God makes people like that. He says, the end of verse 9, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his Wonderful light. That's the purpose for living, my friends. That is to declare the praises of God. Uh, we can unpack it a little. Life can only be meaningful when it is actualized Life is meaningful when it is mission-driven, when it is purposeful, when it is a direction. The question that you need to be dealing with all the time is, what are you here for? We have tried to answer the question of who you are. Now the question is, what are you here for? What is your purpose? What is my purpose? Why am I here? The question leads to a consideration and to making a choice to make sure that you know the reason for being alive and therefore you know the destiny where you're going. We are all human beings called upon to carry out a certain mission, to achieve certain purposes. Each one of us has a mission to accomplish. And God wants to be with us to make sure that our mission is successful. God wants all of us to succeed in our own uniqueness, in our own situation. That is the purpose to be achieved by you, by me, where I am. God calls people, chooses people, makes them royal, makes them special, <laughs> makes them his treasured possession so that they may declare 
they may carry on with the mission as they have been moved from darkness into the marvelous light. You and I were in darkness. Why were we in darkness? We were blind, the song says. We were blind, but because of the amazing grace we see. What blindness is the Bible talking about here? What darkness? We were blinded to something very special that God is doing for us. We were blinded to the grace of God. Now, grace has opened our eyes. We see what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do because of his grace we are catapulted towards him and we rise to the occasion of carrying on the mission that is given to us. The God who created, the God who redeemed or recreated, has a supreme purpose that he wants to be achieved by you in your particular situation. You know what? <laughs> I speak while here before this camera now, I know that many of you are going to be watching this. And I'm saying to myself, how come we have to speak like this in such a setting? The world has changed. COVID-19 has changed our situation. We find ourselves looking for other opportunities because the mission of God cannot be stopped. It must move. Thank God for people who allow God to make them so creative, like these who set up this mission. Let us go. The amazing grace of God, the gracious goodness of God that has been extended to us to make us glorify him. God is glorified when we know who we are and when we know our mission and we rise up to carry it. Uh, in the 17th century, there was a king in England who was concerned about ruling according to God's will. And he said, I want to make sure that I understand the good book, the Bible. I want to rule the people of England from principles that are in the word of God. So those of you who are students of the Bible, theologians, scholars, I've got some money put aside. Please go and study the scriptures and give me the specific purpose for living because I want the people of England to live according to what is in the Bible. Uh, this king put out some money and the scholars moved on to Westminster in England. I have seen the place. It's a place that has got historical events that took place there. It's very significant. The scholars went into the closets, took commentaries, took this and that, and started not for one day, not for one week, not for one month, not for one year. They started and started and started. After some years, they came to the conclusion what the purpose of life is. The conclusion was, long live king! We have found the purpose for living. The purpose for living is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. That's the purpose for living. I want you to get it clear. Even in the 21st century, the purpose for living is to glorify God and enjoy him. And God wants to use you in order to achieve that purpose, to glorify him. When you know your identity, when you know your value, when you know your dignity, when you know that you matter to God and you rise up and say, God, please let me rise up and do something for you. 
God is glorified. People are blessed and the devil is horrified. So, rise up, move. Express who you are with that knowledge of your value, dignity, and declare that God is good. When you rise with that occasion of achieving the mission of God, the mission that God has entrusted in you, he is glorified. Do not listen to the lies of the devil and his cohorts who crisp on whispering, sometimes shouting, Listen, you are nothing. You are nobody. Can't achieve anything. Don't you la- listen to those big lies. You are special. Rise up. Believe that you are special. Tell that God has done something to save. Tell. Celebrate your own story, your victory, because God has made you victorious. I was reading uh, Balisa, my friend I was referring to before, about what you need to know in order to excel, to fly. And one of those illustration that he used was the miracle of procreation. Uh, When we are conceived in our mother's womb, it is a result of the male depositing male sperms into the female organ. Uh, Those of you who know biology, you will understand. When the male deposits those Spams. They, it's not only one. Do you know how many of them are deposited at once? The literature differs. Some, the one that I read just here says, at once, 100 million sperm cells are deposited at once. 100 million. And the only one out of 100 million, only one reaches the egg. They run, they compete. Woo! And the one hits the egg, that egg gets fertilized. The rest, 99.99 million, just die. That's how we are conceived. What does that tell you? Even at conception, God declares you are a champion, you are a success. At conception. So, if you know that, and now you're grown up, and you hear God saying you have a mission, you have a purpose, why must you say, uh, how? No, no, please, no. You are a champion. God created you to succeed. From the very beginning, he declares you are a success. Now, your mission is to declare the praises of him who called you from darkness into this wonderful light. That must go on. Let me refer back to 19, chapter 19 of Exodus, where we read before where Peter is getting this message that is telling the church today, the new Israel. He said, you saw, chapter 19, verses 4 to 6, you saw what I did to the Egyptians. I carried you like an eagle carries its own on the wings. Having made this point that you are a champion, you are a success, because God is with you. I want to illustrate it with uh, that special bird called the eagle because it is a special bird. I like to use this one because 
Some people know it is some characteristics that we can learn lessons of wisdom from. The eagle is a bird. I was born around my top, was in the mountains there. There were many eagles. I admired the eagle, but I also hated the eagle. I loved it because when it flies there in the sky and makes that noise, it's beautiful. But I hated it because it finished my chickens. I, I love chickens. When the eagle flies in the sky and it wants food, you can't stop it. It goes for that food and it gets it. The next time you say, ah, the chicken is gone. It's very fast and you can't stop it. God says, I carried you on eagle's wings. Have that picture of the swift eagle. Not only swift, but also precise. It knows that if the rabbit is running here on a track, in so many seconds it will be there. It does not go to the rabbit. It goes to that place. And it will hit that rabbit and it's when it gets there. Very precise. That's the eagle. And God says, I carried you like that. Can't stop it. And the eagle is invis invincible. You cannot overcome it. You cannot defeat it. It always is a winner. The same eagle does something marvelous against the enemy. The greatest enemy of an eagle is a snake. A snake's. When an eagle, an eagle supposed to snake, it just decides to go up and comes down and zooms on it with its claws, holds it, it does not kill it, it just flies up with it. Up, 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 up. Up. And then when it's up there, it lets go. The snake does not have wings. It comes down, down, down. Before it gets down, it gets it again. Zoom up. Down, 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 down. Up, up until it is dead. The eagle surprises, baffles the enemy. That's how daring it is. God says, that's how I dealt with the enemy, like an eagle. The same eagle has the fortitude to continue when the storm comes, it gets uncomfortable, the winds are blowing and the things are restless. The eagle decides, okay, since there is wind here, it flies up, 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 up. And until it gets to the end of the storm, then it stretches wings. And you, look, you see it doing this, just this, just this, it's enjoying the storm. Instead of using its energy now, the storm carries it. It's enjoying the eagle uses the storm to enjoy life. You know what? The believer in God, when troubles come, he takes those things to God in prayer and enjoys. That's the eagle's way. That's the believer's way. Finally, the eagle. Isaiah 40, verse 31. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength like eagles. They will run and not faint. Isaiah 40, verse 31. The eagle renews this after 40 years. When the beak is not sharp anymore, when the feathers are old, the eagle goes to a rock and uh, scratches a rock. <sighs> Remove the old beak and the new one emerges, which is very sharp. And... It uses this sharp one to cut all the wings that are old, out, all the wings out. And the new wings come up, the new feathers come up. The eagle is new again, it's a new bird. It lives for another 30 to 40 years with the new feathers, new beak. That's why the scripture says, those who hope in the Lord, those who believe in God, renew their strength. 
and they become new again. Your mission cannot be stopped by anyone or the devil himself. Your mission is invincible. Your mission will withstand all the enemies. You dare rise up against this and because God has defeated them. Your mission is a mission of fortitude. The storms will do nothing. Your mission is one of constant renewal in God. May God bless each one of us to avail ourselves to him so that we may have our mission accomplished. How many of you are saying, yes, God, take us and make us fly, carried by you on the wings of an eagle? Towards that end, blessings to you. Let us pray. Almighty God, loving Father, we don't have words or expressions that can really portray what you have done, what you are doing, and what you would do. Help us to rise up in apprehension, connect with you, so we may fly with you, even through the storms of life. Even against the enemies, may we be victorious and renewed all the time. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.